challenging and just trying hard to, to survive. Open and working to stay that way, how a longtime downtown shoe repair shop is working to stay in business during the pandemic. RTV6 is the station committed to helping Hoosiers find jobs. I'm Nicole Griffin tonight in Carmel with a hiring Hoosiers success story. Families are calling for answers when it comes to nursing homes and COVID-19. Tonight, we're sharing where you can turn for help. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Right now at 5, two major stories impacting you and your family tonight. All of the day's developments on the coronavirus front and severe weather. A stormy evening is ahead. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. Kevin. It's been all sunshine during the afternoon hours, but that changes to a stormy evening. More on that in a second. Looks like the timing works out to about 7 to midnight. The storms will show up in western Indiana first, then sweep across central Indiana. Wind, hail, and an isolated tornado can't be ruled out. We're clear now. We're in the waiting game. We'll wait for the thunderstorms that are developing over Illinois to move east. This is a thunderstorm watch for all of central Illinois comes right up to the state line. It's just timing these storms that sit there to the west. They should arrive or get close to the state line by 7 p.m. 78 the temperature in Indy. Bloomington and Terre Haute both made it to 82 today. It's still 82 in Bloomington. 8 o'clock tonight, there are the thunderstorms lined up along the Wabash River. I'll take you through the hour-by-hour hour timing as they march from west to east later this evening. All right, Kevin, we'll see you soon. Now let's get to today's developments regarding the growing COVID-19 pandemic. The state health department today reported 30 additional deaths, bringing Indiana's total to 203. 439 more Hoosiers have tested positive, closing in on 6,000 cases. Nearly 31,000 people have been tested. The state also shares the ages of those who have died. About 70% were age 70 or older. Men continue to die at a much higher rate than women, about 63% to 37%. And finally, the global perspective. More than 1,475,000 positive cases, nearly 87,000 deaths. About 13,800 of those deaths are in the U.S. But we always want to leave you with some positive news. Nearly 23,000 Americans have recovered. Healthcare and hospital workers in Indiana and across the state are working long hours and putting themselves at risk of COVID-19. RTV6's Cameron Riddle shows you what Governor Holcomb says about those workers possibly receiving extra pay for working so close to danger. Well, many of us are working from home to avoid getting sick from coronavirus. Not everyone has that luxury, especially healthcare workers who are on the front lines of the pandemic just one touch away from contracting a disease that has proved to be deadly and sometimes unpredictable. Because of the unavoidable hazards of the work environment, some are asking for health care workers to receive hazard pay on top of their earnings. Indiana's governor says that could be a possibility. More to follow. We're tracking uh, very closely what's being discussed in Washington, D.C. in the congressional packages that are coming through. I know that's being bantered around. Um, I have always said I'm not going to take anything off the table at this early uh, juncture. Um, but we, we are very appreciative of what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now. And we are postured uh, to put those resources to work as soon as they get here. The governor says he is in constant contact with the federal government to provide more financial help for Hoosiers. He says on a phone call this week, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin indicated more assistance could be on the way to help small business continue to pay their staff or even rehire employees that have been furloughed during the coronavirus pandemic. Cameron Ruddle, RTV6. And hiring Hoosiers is keeping track of the unemployment benefit process for thousands of Hoosiers who have lost their jobs due to coronavirus. The state is keeping firm that it will get you money within 21 days of applying. RTV6's Rafael Sanchez joins us now to explain how this all works. Hey, Rafael. 
Amanda, good afternoon. We tell your unemployment stories to keep track of the process, to hold the process accountable. So this morning, I woke up to some really good news. Sandy Shepard from Shelbyville has received her benefits. We profiled her story yesterday right here on our TV6. Michael from Indianapolis, who makes parts for Ford, also received his benefits. Sandy received them after waiting 18 days. Michael 14 days, both well within the 21 day limit that the state is talking about. But a lot of you are asking about money, right? When am I gonna get the money and how much money is gonna kick in? So beginning the week of April the 20th, the feds are gonna kick in an extra $600 weekly to your benefits all the way through July. You add that to the maximum that the state provides, which is $390. If you get both amounts, you'll have about $1,000 in benefits all the way through July. But here's the problem. Keep this in mind, not everyone in Indiana gets the $390 state benefit. They don't get the full maximum. And here's the formula. It's a bit like geometry, but we're going to make it as easy as possible right now so that you can understand how the state determines what you're going to get dollar-wise. And here is the math. Let's say you earn $30,000. Well, the state would divide that by 52 weeks. That equals $576.92. But then... The state only pays out weekly 47% of what you earned. It's called the replacement pay. So 576 is multiplied by 0.47. So your weekly state benefit in this scenario would be $271. That means when you kick in the federal benefit, you would get $871 all the way through July. So keep this in mind. In 2018, better times for Hoosiers, Hoosiers were, uh, were on the unemployment system for about 12 and a half weeks, and the state average benefit was not the 390, it was 200. And $96. This unemployment tsunami continues and we'll continue to follow it right here on RTV6. Amanda, now back to you. Raphael, thank you. And Hiring Hoosiers is also connecting you to companies that are looking for help in this tough time. We have a success story to share with you tonight. Our TV6's Nicole Griffin is in Carmel with a look at how Hiring Hoosiers helped more than a dozen people find new jobs. Since the story aired in March on Senior One Care here in Carmel looking to hire caregivers, the company has received dozens of applications. They have already hired about 15 new employees. And tonight we're sitting down with one of those employees who says she saw this story and knew that she had to apply. When we found out we was going to have to close our doors, it was really scary. For 15 years, Tanisha Anderson has been a hairstylist, but the pandemic has forced salons across the state to close their doors. I was watching Channel 6 News and then the segment Hiring Hoosiers came across. Tonight our TV 6's Nicole Griffin is taking us inside the opportunity at a local company. After seeing this story on Senior One Care looking to hire people who were out of work due to the virus. It just kind of touched on me. Tanisha got online, applied for the job and two weeks later she's completed personal care attendant or PCA training. Right Right now, we need so many Hoosiers on the front line to take care of those who have fallen ill. So Governor Holcomb and the Indiana State Department of Health have partnered up and created a new program called a personal care attendant. Senior One Care's Legacy CNA Training School is offering the two half day program for free at Noblesville High School in effort to have enough space to social distance. Meanwhile, Tanisha is already putting her new skills to use and has already cared for her first client. It was it was uh, an uplifting experience. What's really helped us most since the story has aired is hiring people who are truly compassionate. Senior One Care says compassion is not a skill you can teach. It's something that comes from your heart. And those are the type of people applying right now. People who want to help seniors during these tough times. Working for you in Carmel, Nicole Griffin. RTV6. Nicole, thanks. And you can find a link at hiringhoosiers.com if you are interested in signing up for the free PCA training. It's held several times a week and there are also online courses. It's free and open to anyone looking to work in nursing homes or other facilities where you care for seniors. And hiringhoosiers.com is also where you can connect with more companies that are looking to hire right now.
The state revealed today that at least 31 people have died at Indiana nursing homes and long-term care facilities from COVID-19, including facilities in Madison and Johnson counties. These deaths account for 15% of all COVID-19 deaths in the state. RTV6 reporter Kara Kenny talked with families who are increasingly concerned about their loved ones and found out where you can go for help. Most of us are using our phones and our computers to talk to loved ones. And some families haven't seen their loved ones in nursing homes for weeks, and some feel they're not getting any answers. Gloria Benefield's 91-year-old mother, Violet, is a resident at Greenwood Meadows. She's concerned because she says a nurse told her some patients at the facility have tested positive for COVID-19. Gloria is worried about her mom and says she's stunned by the lack of information provided by Greenwood Meadows about the situation. I don't want to know what they're doing and are they testing the other residents? which I know they're not doing. Communication is absolutely key. And not only during the pandemic, but just overall, when a loved one, your family member is in a facility, communication with the staff, you want to know what's going on, and it's best to be transparent. If you're having trouble with your loved one's nursing home, you can reach out to a state or local long-term care ombudsman that acts as a mediator between residents, their families, and the facilities. We reached out to American Senior Communities, which operates Greenwood Meadows, and they did not respond to our questions about COVID-19 at that facility. The health and wellness of our residents and employees remains top priority. We are in close contact with local and state health authorities and following their guidance, along with national and CDC recommendations and mandates. ASC says they are screening every employee and vendor who comes into their buildings. Employees are wearing masks and they have a strict no visitor policy except for end of life situations. Kara Kenny, RTV6. Well, the state health commissioner announced today an order requiring long-term care facility directors to report COVID-19 uh, COVID cases to local and state health departments within 24 hours. That includes residents and workers. We've created links on how to reach the ombudsman in this story on the RTV6 app and at the IndyChannel.com. Indianapolis Public Schools has changed how often it distributes food to families in need. Prepackaged meals are now only given away on Mondays and Wednesdays. Arlington Woods School on the east side was a busy place for today's distribution. Any student, even non-IPS children, can get a total of 15 meals over both days to cover the whole work week. IPS says this will limit the number of times a week families have to leave their house. For pickup locations and times, go to myips.org. Still ahead on the news at five, still open to keep shoes on your feet. The longtime business owner taking it one step at a time to adapt to the changing world. And fresh salads and soup, the Speedway business open right now for carryout. All eyes on Illinois for now. This is the line of severe storms we will inherit. We'll talk about that timing and the huge temperature impact that awaits coming up. RTV6 is proud to be working together with the United Way of Central Indiana. We're teaming up for the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. The initiative supports organizations that serve people and families affected by the pandemic. You can donate to the fund by texting HELP2020 to 91999. Well, it has been a staple of the downtown uh, scene for decades. And now one rep shoe repair shop wants you to know that it is still open for business, helping in any way it can. RTV6's Megan Sanctorum talked to the shop owner with this message that he wants you to know. All along Meridian Street, you'll find businesses that are closed and doors that are locked. But here at Cento Shoes, you'll see a flashing open sign in the window as they find ways to still provide their service while keeping people safe. Inside this small shop, you won't find any customers. Instead, you'll see a lot of shoes that need some work and a local man determined to stay in business. Whoever really, really knows me, this shop's everything to me. So every day, owner Tony Sento comes in and hits the phone, calling customers to check in 
and offer contact-free repairs. All what you put in it, and you just gotta, you know, be smart and be safe, but just keep, keep reaching out to people. When they leave the shoes at their front door, and then I pretty much go pick them up, you know, with no contact, and um, it's slowly starting to, to work. He says payment is done over the phone, and when the shoes are ready, he returns them right back to the customer's front porch. Probably have had 40, maybe 45 people in the last three weeks use it. He says he's looking into the small business loans available under the CARES Act, but he's hoping to make it through the old fashioned way by connecting with customers and working hard. And my dad, he came from Italy and he started this business and um, he worked so hard. Next year will be 50 years and uh, I honestly think I'll be stronger when we're on the other side because you'll get closer to customers. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. Thanks, Megan. And Sento says he hopes to keep offering delivery service even after businesses reopen. And RTV6 is putting the focus of all types of businesses that are still open and ready to serve you. Many of them are restaurants working to keep the doors open through carryout. The famous Tomato is a small fresh produce market in Speedway, and it's open right now. The family-owned business offers a fresh salad and soup bar and sells old-fashioned soda and sauces. The Ray family has been in business for years, and the struggle to stay open right now is an all too fresh reminder of the recession of 2008. We obviously want to save the business. Yeah. That's the main goal because I've been on the other end uh, during the recession several years ago and we lost a 39 year old family business. So I don't want to do that. A little different situation I hope. Um, there was no help for small business back then. I don't know if I can get that or if, you know, I'm going to try obviously. The family business he referred to that they lost was the old farm market in Avon. The famous tomato is open 10 to 7 Monday through Saturday for carry out of fresh salads and soup. They're located at 5002 West 10th Street in Speedway. And for more info about the famous tomato and other restaurants and businesses that are still open to serve you, check out our website, theindychannel.com, and help save some jobs. Well, now to the weather, and it's a Storm Team 6 Alert Day. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is tracking the storm potential. Kevin. And right now we wait with that sunshine, Amanda, and temperatures around 80 degrees. Took this picture of my tree today. It's doing what it's supposed to. It's red and it's budding, and it looks good with all that green in the background. We managed 79 today. That's great. But here's the reality. Look what happens tomorrow. Temperature 51 degrees. That comes with a strong wind gusting over 30, so it will feel much, much colder. That is not the cold, coldest for, uh, forecasted high in the seven-day forecast. We may actually see a few snowflakes uh, Monday night and Tuesday night of next week. 82 in Bloomington, 80 in Lafayette, Terre Haute, Columbus, both above the 80 degree mark. Indy sits at 78. I just want to show you the colder air sits to the northwest. It's in the 40s in the Dakotas, 50s, Minneapolis. And this little tongue of warmth here will be the area favorable for thunderstorm development and severe storm potential. Nearly every storm that's developed in Illinois has had a warning on it so far. As these move to the east, I think what happens is in individual cells will all merge. We'll get a line of storms with primarily a damaging wind and hail threat. Can't rule out an isolated tornado in this case, but I think uh, the hail and wind are the greatest threat. Let's do this hourly. Seven o'clock, storms right along the state line. Take this to eight. You see that line I'm talking about, Terre Haute to Lafayette to Monticello. Nine o'clock, surging east of Terre Haute toward Bloomington, Indianapolis, Kokomo, and Peru. Take it an hour later, 10 o'clock, shifting east of Indianapolis, still a fairly intense line, could have some wind gusts to 70 miles per hour or stronger, then by 11 o'clock, starting to push into the Buckeye State. That timing may change a little bit. Again, here are the threats that we anticipate, but it's quite a change from what we've had through the day, where it's been just a beautiful day. Storm Shield app, it is free. It's critical if you want warnings sent to your phone, wherever you're at, or if you're asleep, this will wake you up. It's free for your iPhone and Android. Tomorrow morning, lots of sunshine, much cooler. In the 40s, tomorrow afternoon, the clouds return. A couple of showers as that cold air settles in and the winds will howl. They'll gust 30 to 40 miles per hour. Only 47 Friday. 
55 Saturday on Sunday, Easter Sunday, 61 with some rain likely. Temperatures after Monday fall again into the 30s uh, for lows and 40s for highs Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, sometimes all it takes is a beautiful voice and some words of inspiration to turn things around. And that's what one educator was hoping when she picked up a pen and her guitar. Next. Days from 430 to 7. These days, we're seeing countless examples of Hoosiers going that extra distance, working together to lift each other up during these tough times. And one educator in Warren Township is turning to music to reach her students and get a message across. It's been That's Miss Celia Kalf singing and strumming the guitar. She's a counselor at Hawthorne Elementary School. She wrote and sang the tune called Distance in This Instance and sent it out to share with her students today. Miss Kalf says she wrote the song because she wanted all of her students to know how much they are truly treasured today and every day. A great song there to hear. Still ahead here on RTV6 as we take a live look at our